Hello guys, this week I give you my best tips on using Lightroom and Photoshop. Come and join me. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, France, and welcome to episode 49 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. Last week I showed you a full retouching using Lightroom 5 that just came out. This is the before and this is the after. Check it out, I think it's a great episode. This week we're going to do something different. I'm going to start a series of tips and this is my best tips on using Lightroom and using Photoshop. So let's not waste any time and let's get started. Okay guys, so welcome to this episode 49 of my podcast. Today I'm going to give you some of my best tips on using Lightroom and Photoshop. Now the tip number one, and that's a confusion that apparently a lot of people have, is color space. One thing you have to understand is whenever you import a raw file into Lightroom, Lightroom is going to work in the Pro Photo color space. That means that if I take a photo and I right click and edit, edit in Adobe Photoshop, what it's going to do is that it's going to open the photo and the profile that will be used is Pro Photo. Now why Pro Photo? There is tons of color profile, but to make it simple, Pro Photo is the best. Okay, it's where you get the best corrections. So if I go to edit and I want to convert to profile, uh, you see the source space is Pro Photo RGB, and then I can convert into whatever I want. Okay, now that's one thing you should understand. Now some people have troubles when they, they have photos coming from Lightroom into Photoshop, they get a sort of a warning message or things like this. Now there is another very important setting and that is when you go to edit, color settings, okay? That's very, very important. Now, what is my color setting? My working space is RGB. Now, what does that mean? It means that if I create an empty document in Photoshop, it's gonna be in an sRGB. Now, this is just my habits of using, but if I really wanted to have, uh, you know, a very powerful uh, way of working, I could use Profoto, but the thing is, whenever I create a document in Photoshop, it's usually just to make a little logo or to make a, you know, some little design. And sRGB is fine enough for me because that's the color space being used on the web. And whenever I, I usually when I do like some heavy retouching, I always come from Lightroom. And when I come from Lightroom, I have Profoto. Now, why don't I get a warning message? Because this is what you should have here on the color management policy. RGB, preserve embedded profile. You've got three choices, off, convert to working RGB, or preserve embedded profiles. I advise you to have preserve embedded profiles. What that means is that when you come from Lightroom or where, or if you somebody gives you a photo, whatever, whatever profile is in that photo will be preserved. And, and uh, Photoshop is not gonna ask you anything. And for me, that's the best way of working. If I create a document, it is true, it's gonna be in sRGB, not in Profoto. But as I said, I only create documents, you know, to create little logos or things that don't, don't need big color spaces. And uh, when I need big color spaces, I'm always coming from Lightroom, so I've got Profoto. So that's the first thing you should know. The second thing is, when you're in Lightroom, if you go to File, sorry, Preferences in Lightroom, and you go to External Editing, uh, you've got, a couple of choice here. Choice number one, uh, file format. You've got TIFF or PSD. You should choose TIFF. The reason you should choose TIFF is that you will have more options. Uh, for example, uh, there is a, if you look back in my podcast, there is a podcast about doing HDR uh, with uh, Photoshop and Lightroom, meaning you get three exposures, you get them out to Photoshop, you just get them as an HDR file and then you actually do the tone bumping and the processing in Lightroom. For that to work, you need to be in TIFF, okay? So TIFF is the way to go. Color Space Pro Photo. I could do a, a, a Adobe RGB or sRGB, but I don't want that because I want the best possible retouch, okay? Now, bit depth, that's being a, it's, it's a big discussion that people have. If you choose 16-bit, your files will be double of the size and personally, I have never seen a difference. I cannot with my eyes see a difference between the 8-bit and 16-bit. Now that's just me. Maybe you saw a difference, that's just me. So as, as, as it makes huge file, I keep it to 8 bits, okay? And uh, yeah, that's basically, that's my edit in Adobe uh, Photoshop CC. 
that's my uh, that's my edits for uh, Adobe Photoshop CS6 because I still have CS6 installed. So it's the same settings basically. Okay, so that was my tip number one. Tip number two is that when uh, some people tell me, wow, your photo look great on the web. How do you get them out on the web? Now, 99% when I get a photo out on the web, what I do is I just right click, export, export, and I use the uh, this, this thing, the export for the web option, okay? And if I'm into uh, Photoshop, I always use save for the web uh, because you see, it's gonna convert to sRGB. Let's say that in, I'm, I'm doing this um, photo and I go to File, Save As, and I choose JPEG. You know, I just want to uh, save it as a JPEG. Look at this. It says Embedded Color Profile Pro Photo, so it's not going to look good. So, stable data, if you want to export anything to the web, use either the export function in Lightroom or either the export for the web function in Photoshop, okay? Just a simple rule of thumb. Now, uh, one thing that I do, and a lot of people ask me is, uh, that's my tip number three, is export for printing. How do you do to export for printing? Well, as you know, I'm working in Profoto. Most of the printers I've been working with, and most of the printers today are working with, with sRGB, unless they have special profiles, in which case they give it to you. So what I do, because you see, I cannot use the file save for the web uh, to export for a printer. Why? Because it's a huge file size and this this window, this option is really made for small files. Now, when I, whenever I print big files, they are huge files. So uh, I can get my, sometime, I mean, not now because I've got a new uh, iMac with 32 gigabits uh, uh, of, of RAM. So it's a huge powerhouse. But before, when I had a slower computer, if I take a huge file and I go save for the web, it just crashes my Photoshop. So you do your retouching in Photoshop and you want to make a nice big print. You did everything in Pro Photo because you followed my instructions. So all you do then is you go to edit, convert to profile, and, and then you choose the sRGB. So you go from Pro Photo to sRGB, but you do this as your last step because it's gonna flatten your image most of the time. And then once you've done that, you go to file, save as, and then you can take the JPEG option and it's gonna go very fast. It's gonna save it very fast, but it will say there embedded with sRGB. And most printers today use sRGB. Funny thing, they don't use Adobe, uh, Adobe um, RGB 98 or sRGB. They use sRGB because why? Because most of the JPEG on the planet is with the sRGB profile. So, I mean, I have a special printer uh, where the guy gives me a profile, it's called the Laser Lab profile, that I then I, they just give it to me and then I would convert that to Laser Lab before saving as a JPEG. But I always save as a JPEG, or oh, also one thing, I save as a JPEG and I save, uh, so I take the JPEG option and the quality, because we're talking huge size, I go for 10. I don't go for 12 because it makes huge file and 10 makes perfect prints. Uh, so that's the quality that I use for, and I've been doing this for many years and I never had a, a quality trouble in my big prints. And we're talking like five feet, 10 feet prints, you know, big, big, big prints. Okay, uh, last tip for that episode, and that's a huge one. Uh, uh, if you follow my podcast, you know that I always do the same things when I start, you know, I open up the shadows, bring down the highlights, bring the whites, the blacks, clarity, you know, then I go to, uh, uh, on about profile correction. I mean, I do, there, there, there is things, you see, I, I realize that there are things that I do over and over and over again, 99% on almost each photos. So then I decided to do something a few months back, it, which is to create a preset that I call start. Okay. And I'm going to show it to you. That's my start preset. Check it out. So I just click one click. And the reason I have this start preset is that it gives me uh, a preview of, of the potential of the photo. It's not an end thing, you know, this is not a good retouch, but you know, look what the start preset did. It put up the shadows at plus 100, it got the highlights at minus 100, which is what I do on every photo. Okay, it got the whites up and the blacks up. It got the clarity up, so I don't have to, I don't have to do that. And in the lens profile, it did the profile correction and the removed the chromatic aberration, okay? And uh, I think, yeah, that's about it. 
So that's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of sliders that I don't have. And now all I have to do is go with the option key, press the this key. Oh, I see that my sun is out, so I bring this back. And same thing for this, maybe it's a bit too dark. Okay. And then I have to change the white balance. Let's go for cloudy, for example. You know, ooh, that could be interesting. And, you know, maybe take some noise out. But you see, it did 90% of the job. All right. Give you another example. This is another photo. I just go and I click on start and I do that now and it really, really. And so that's my basic retouching. Now, if I find that I have too much clarity, I can just back it down. I just check. I don't check the shadows and highlights. I know they are good. So I just go and check the blacks. I check the whites. OK, maybe I get the whites a bit more, you know, and uh, and yeah, basically that's it. I know I took my profile correction. Uh, I just have maybe to add a bit of vignetting. And I'm done with my retouch, you know, I just have to play around now with the white balance to get the proper look. So uh, I will go on my website. If you go on my podcast uh, uh, menu here on photosearch.com, the link is anyway in the, um, the description of this video, you will have a button called episode 49, share and download raw file. When you click on that, Basically, what it's going to do is ask you if you are OK to share my website on your social network. And if you do, well, uh, all you have to do is click on uh, the Facebook link or the Google Plus and it will reveal a link and I will offer you my start preset, which is uh, my secret weapon uh, for photo and only wo it works with Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5. OK, so that's my first tip for this week. Uh, next week, I will give you some more tips. And before I leave you, I want to again show you this trailer I did for my new workflow course. I spent a lot of time doing this course. I've get great reviews on it. Check it out because it's the only course uh, where I really show basically how I work, really, you know, how I take the photos, how I actually work on a day to day basis, you know, and how I retouch it in Lightroom and how I finish it off in Photoshop, even sometimes using plugins like ColorFX Pro. And, uh, it's different from my ISO training, which is really learning Photoshop or learning Lightroom. This is learning my workflow, if that's of any interest to you. But apparently it is to some people. Thank you very much. This is the trailer and then we get back to the studio. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to this uh, full workflow course. My name is Serge Remeli and I'm going to take you to Paris. I'm going to take you to Israel and show you exactly how I work from shooting, compositing my photos to post processing. Many people ask me, but you know, what settings do you use on your camera or how do you do your framing? That's why I wanted to show you how I take the photo and how I retouch it. Here you can see some of the projects we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing panoramas, long exposures. We are going to do some very uh, night photos or early morning photos. You will see exactly how I use Lightroom and how I use Photoshop to get the results that you can see here. So come and join me in this training class. So I hope you like that tutorial. This tips is really what I use on a day to day basis and has been my most successful tips over the last years. I hope you like it. If you have the time, check out my full workflow course. I've got great reviews on it and I think you will like it. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week.